Why, hello there. I see you actually showed up. Come in, come in. I have an amazing story to tell you. Have a seat in front of this nice, warm, real fireplace. And let me tell you about how I made the most small-brained, stupidest, stupid decision in my programming life. And it actually turned out okay. So I've been working on this game called Jacob's Square, where you take a square and you try to make it spin as fast as you possibly can. I know, great game concept. If you want to see more about it, you can check out this video that I made a couple months ago. But if you look at the timestamps from when this video was uploaded to the video before that, you can see it was almost six months. Th that's a long time. So, in fear of that happening again, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just get a smaller project out of the way. Something that'll take me maybe a month. Don't worry, I'm still working on Jacob Square. Part 2 is still coming. And I was sitting there and I was thinking to myself, what sort of projects could I do that would be relatively easy compared to Jacob Square? A pretty common one is Snake. Old school Snake. So I was like, okay, that's cool. I, I could work with that. And then the gears in my brain started turning. And I was like, mm, what's some cool features that I could add to this small project? So my brain was like, okay, we need small project. We have Snake as the base. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my brain failed me big time on this one. Small project and multiplayer do not belong in the same conversation. I should have known this, but I was like, oh yeah, this is cool, I'm, I'm gonna do this. And I went for it. So, I started this project off just as I would any other project. I got a GitHub repository set up, got the actual Unity project set up. Ooh, that's new and neat and cool. I don't know why I'm getting so excited over a loading screen. And then downloaded some of the basic Unity packages that I like to use within my projects. Are you... I don't know why, but I'm suddenly getting a lot of deja vu here. I decided the first course of action would be to get some of the multiplayer set up. I have worked with multiplayer and Unity a little bit in the past, but not really seen it all the way through. So I figured I would start with this. Thank you, Code Monkey, for allowing me to sip from your pool of infinite knowledge. And after a bit of multiplayer networking logic, I was able to get it to where I could get two clients to connect with each other. Riveting gameplay. Now that I had basic networking implemented, I felt it was time to implement the basic mechanics for Snake. Starting with the snake. For this game, I needed something scary. Something terrifying. Something so intimidating, it instills fear into the hearts of people all ages. <laughs> Don't worry, this is just the placeholder art. Now that I had something that I could visually look at for the snakes, I began performing the old tippity taps on my keyboard. Oh god, my space bar! It gave the snakes the ability to move along a grid system. Along with this, I made it to where the snakes turn to face the direction they're moving, and you can visually tell this right now by the little baby tongue on the front of the snakes. I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda cute. The only problem is, it's not network. None of it is. So this game is, uh, not functional. So after implementing RPCs, 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 and more RPCs, I was finally able to get the snakes to where their movement was synced across the network. I'm just kidding, I just used the client network transform. And I know what you're thinking. How come on one client, the movement looks fine and natural, and on the other client, it... <laughs> doesn't. Listen, multiplayer is a complex beast, and even the most simplest things like movement can take a lot of work. Fixed it! Okay, I admit I may have over-exaggerated that one a little bit. From here, I moved on to implementing the segments for the snakes, and made it to where they can be added and subtracted at runtime to make the snakes longer or shorter, as you do in Classic Snake. Also, as you do in Classic Snake, I made it to where you can consume a food item that will randomly spawn on the map. <laughs> oh, this is going so well. It's okay, it's okay. All of the red means it's working. I then shifted my focus more toward network stuff again, 
and decided to implement Unity's relay and lobby system, because why connect to a server using an IP Minecraft style when you can connect using a join code Among Us style? I regret absolutely nothing. To implement this properly though, I needed to get the UI set up for the game. To do this, I went online and found a nice font that I felt fit the style of the game and threw together an oddly satisfying button that I could use throughout the user interface. Oh yeah! Hold on, throat dry. <coughs> Now that I had some UI elements thrown together that I could use, I decided to start working on the character select screen where all of the players for the game will gather before the game begins. And because I had very specific plans for the character select screen, I figured I'd go ahead and replace the placeholder snake art with something a little more final. So after doing this, throwing together some basic menus, and adding the ability to change your snake color so that, you know, everybody can tell who each other's snakes are, that did not come out smooth. I was now able to connect two clients together without using a port forwarding. Oh my god, it worked. <laughs> At this point in the project, I decided it was time for a <clears throat> networking <laughs> overhaul. Because up until now, the root of the snake, along with every single individual segment on the snake, was sending updated positional information, and that, that's really not ideal, and I honestly could not tell you why I did it that way. I can literally hear my own computer laughing at me. But with this new custom system, only the root of the snake will send any updated information, and then from there, all the individual clients will actually be in charge of building the rest of the snake. So ideally, you will notice zero difference, but a substantially less amount of data will be sent over the network. So let's see here. You're gone. You're gone. You're gone, and you're gone. By the way, it was at this point that I used those uh, remote procedural calls. They weren't fake. <laughs> now maybe my computer will finally leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to you, you electronic piece. What am I doing? Along with this, I also decided that I wanted to create some new art and some questionable logic and make it to where the snake is one solid snake instead of individual segments. Uh, you feeling okay, buddy? All right, fingers crossed that this works this time. <laughs> Oh my god, it did not work! Got freaking Super Snake over here! Please work, please work, please work, please work. You know, I, I have a really small feeling that my fix is not really doing any fixing. This does give me an idea, though. Okay, okay, so far so good. Please work, I swear. Okay, let me- oh, Extra wide! Oh my god, there's- Oh my god, his head is gone! Oh my god, it's working! How does it work in multiplayer, though? It doesn't. Okay, now it does. After struggling through all of that, I decided I wanted to move on and work on something different for a little while. And I decided to work on some more art for the game. One of the things included in this, though, was the title. But to make the title, I had to come up with a title first. So I knew I had a multiplayer snake game. Multiplayer snake would involve Involve multiple snakes. Okay, we're off to a good start, right? But that's too basic. You gotta, you gotta go bigger than that. Several snakes. I like it. I like where this is going, but it's not cool enough. You know, we need something a little more. Yeah, okay, that works. Now that I officially had the title figured out, I put on some nice, relaxing background music and got right to work creating the art for the title. I've double dinked the Reaper. Ow. Ow! Let's fuck I you am up, not bro. pushing enter! What the fuck is going on? Ah, I didn't have anything to help pick up on that, Matthew. What the fuck is he chasing me? God! Get a fucking support! Help me! It's beautiful. I also added some trees and grass and a couple flowers around the background to make it a little more interesting. The next thing on the list was the food that the snakes eat. And for this game, I really don't want to do apples because I feel like that is way overused in snake games. So I decided to consult one of my friends on Discord and ask him what he thought. So I decided to consult one of my friends on Discord and ask him what he thought. Okay, he's typing. My 
God, what is he sending me an essay? I, I feel like this question isn't that difficult to answer. Okay, here we go. Snakes often like the color red over other colors, so this must be a factor in deciding what they like to eat. I'll let narrow things down a bit, however, we must go deeper. They also need to be something that they can easily get down, so it must also be round in shape. This leaves with only a few options remain. Leaves with only a few options remain. Good English, Trevor. Also, snakes are often very sour creatures emotionally, so we must give them something sweet to counteract this. Therefore, they must eat apples. <sighs> I swear, Nick, if you let me down. Why, why do I do this to myself? Yeah, snakes must eat apples, they said. Yeah, snakes are emotionally sour creatures, they said. I was thinking Trevor just messaged me something. There, there's your apples. Are you happy? Now that I had built a solid foundation, it was time to slap the house on top with content. content. Some of the things that I added included a nice little HUD where you could see everybody in the game, the ability for snakes to actually die, oh, what did I break this time, and a beautiful winning screen. Yeah, in this game, we're all winners. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it! I also added this little loading screen that actually changes color depending on what color your snake is. Now, as usual, just to make the game more interesting, I wasn't just gonna make it multiplayer. No, 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 no. I also added a bunch of different game modes, all with their own unique experiences and special win conditions. One of the game modes I actually got the idea for from one of the bugs that I experienced earlier, in which you must use your snake to get as much control of the map as you can. Hey, wait, that's not the right winner. That's still not the right winner. Oh, why am I here just to suffer? <laughs> Took 10 times longer than it should have. Along with this, I also added a bunch of power-ups that you can either use to give yourself an advantage or to sabotage other people in your game. Hey, yo, what the darts doing? Now, I could obviously tell you about all of these game modes and power-ups within this video, but why do that when you could figure out about it on your own by playing the game? Shameless. <laughs> I also found a little extra time and threw in some obstacles to make things 100,000 times more difficult, along with adding a settings window where you can customize all of the options for the game from the character select screen. At this point, a majority of the rest of my time was spent adding some smaller features and polish, such as camera shake, different particle effects, a nice little menu at the beginning of a game that gives you some information about the current game mode, a settings menu, and a few other small things. I also added some sound effects using the power of my own mouth <sighs> and this really cool tool that I found online called JFXR. I guess my phone wanted to be a part of that too. Finally, I needed to add some background music to the game. To do this, I consulted somebody other than myself as I am not musically inclined whatsoever. All right, let's see what we got here. It's perfect! And after months of work, 200 plus GitHub commits, and more than 90 gigabytes of development footage, the project of Several Snack was complete. The game is not available for download yet, as I'm still working on putting together an itch.io page for it, and I'm also working on throwing together a little video of a few friends and I actually playing the game. Honestly, I'll probably release those two at the same time. This project was a ton of fun to work on, and I was able to learn a lot, and there's definitely a lot that I would do different if I did it over again. I'm not touching multiplayer with a 
10 foot pole for the next 20 years. But nonetheless, I'm really happy with how this project came out. Stay tuned for it to be released so you'll actually get a chance to play it yourself. And if you want to check out similar content to this, you can watch one of my other videos that I have available on my channel. And yeah, that's about it. Bye!